Hello, and welcome to Matt and Joe's Media Overload. This is Matt. And I am Joe, and welcome to our episode about random ramblings. This yes. is our episode that, what? It, it probably ties most into that um, underlying theme that Joe always likes to throw out. Who knows where we'll go? Who knows? Because we'll we go. actually have no topic. Well, I mean, we have a couple of like points of discussion in mind, um, but they're very vague. I mean, they're not really going to like steer the entire episode. Yeah, I wouldn't call them. I wouldn't call them world shakers. Like topics. I said, they're literally just points of discussion. And um, why? And why do you think it is that we're not? as up to key this week as normal. I think it's just a change of pace. I mean, I think it's just with all the stuff we have going on outside of, you know, this. Look, guys. We don't always have time to do the prep that we look, look, we do in certain episodes. Look, we're only human. Yeah. You guys are only human. You're doing what you do day to day. So are we. But we're trying to bring this content to you when we can. We might as well start there. What is day to day for us? Why why is it so hard for us to find time to produce this content? Well, I think for me, it's because I work nine to five and plus with the drive to Nashville and back. I don't live in Nashville. Uh, I live forty five to an hour uh, drive outside of Nashville. Yes, so as do I, because we're neighbors. Wait, you drive that far into Nashville too? No, I'm saying we live in the same. Yeah, but you don't drive. No, don't drive. no. You don't do what I'm doing. That's not what I said. I was saying we live in the same. That's what area. it sounded like. What it sounded like you were saying? No, you said I live outside of Nashville. I said as do I, because we're neighbors. Oh. Semantics, sir. Uh, okay, well, you're not driving into Nashville, are I, you? I never said that I did. Okay. That's what I'm saying. No, you said that you live outside of Nashville, and I said, as do I. Yes. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Just keep telling your story. Okay. Well, I was trying to. Now I'm... I'm sure people would love to hear about your 9 to 5 life. Go ahead. You shut up. Go ahead and tell them. Anyway. Just so now we remember where I was going with the whole fucking so you know, conversation. Just so you know, we tried to do a webcast instead this week, and it it was terrible. It backfired. It was, I quit in the middle of it. I thought it was fine. I did not. Matt was like, this is... Fuckery at its finest. I seriously considered like walking out of the studio and never coming back. Like I, I did not. Matt know. looked me in the eye and he said, "Joe, I'm done." Yeah, I did. And then I, then I looked him in the eye and said, "No, let's fix this. Let's fix this, Matt." So we're here, and oh, I think it's going well. I'm glad you're back on board. Yeah. I really thought that that was that was probably where we should have headed, though. What? Videos with videos in the background. Well, I liked it for like a little while. I still don't understand what turned you. You can literally see the exact moment. We'll probably release the video. I don't. We care. will put it out. I I don't care. I act like a diva. We're gonna call it. Through. Matt just doesn't approve. <laughs> That's the name of the video. <laughs> Matt I, just doesn't approve. Like there, I'm not going to spoil it in case you want to watch it, but there's literally an exact moment where you can see my face lose all interest, and about five <laughs> seconds later I go, this is boring. Like I just flat out, like, just turn into, I'm a diva, I'll admit it, I... Anyway, I've never seen you. I've never heard or seen you do that before ever. Because usually I'm very proud of what we're making. I'm proud of our content. I you was like not. That. I was not. I proud thought we were of trying that. to be innovative. It started off good. You can see I enjoy it for a while. So we were on. T we were headed in the right direction. Yes, and and, and 
it, it really got So we just have to refine that. Yeah. I think it would be better if you and I had headphones. Both of us had headphones on. Maybe. Talking. Possibly. I don't, but... <laughs> well, you know that's how computer-intensive games is going to work. Yes, I think that'll be fine for that, but... Um, I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's going, what in the fuck is that plastic cracking sound every goddamn five seconds? You want to talk about something annoying... Why don't you keep telling your story about um, a, d a typical day for you? Like a regular day for me? Yes, what you were doing like fi uh, five minutes ago before you started talking about semantics. Even so I think it was pretty clear exactly what I was talking about. So a typical day for me. Yeah. So I wake up. Yeah. I try to wake up about an hour before I'm supposed to leave to go to work. Mm-hmm. Right? So I have enough time um, to, you know, kind of get through the growing pains of waking up. And then I go take a shower, take a shit and a shave. The SS. Right? Yeah. That's like three S's. But then, but then you, get an, you get an extra S because I take a smoke. That's I four smoke. S's. Yeah. So I smoke before I leave. Chris is getting his ass out of town. Um, so... To be honest with you, the longest part of my days are two parts, and they both begin with S. Shit takes a while, because I like to read the news and, you know, catch up on everything. Yeah. And then I, you know, do all my other stuff. And, and you're smoke. also just constipated. Yeah. And then I smoke. And smoke, dude, I'll tell you this. Yeah. As a smoker, a smoker of marijuana... Can you say that on the internet? No, I just did. I'm just kidding. I don't care. Um, it takes me like a little bit to get ready. Like I wake up, the first smoke of the day, they were like, oh, it's the best. No, it's not good. But the lungs have to get ready. And it takes a minute. Yeah. So, uh, oh my, oh, oh my God. Okay, anyway. I'm sure everybody um, <laughs> listening to you explain <laughs> this. First, they're wondering why you're saying, oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still watching Chris play uh, Just Cause 3. Joe's um, masturbating, and he's about to, <laughs> he's about um, to climax. Yeah, so when I wake up in the morning, I... But, I'll, but I'll I also think everyone's wondering what this has to do with us not having time to plan a proper topic, which is what started this whole conversation. Look. Waking up in the morning and smoking is one of the greatest things ever. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know and comment below if you know! At the bottom, uh, sometimes when you hit it at the very beginning of the morning, oof, it's rough. Your lungs aren't ready. They haven't, they haven't, you, you wake up your lungs don't. Yeah. So you hit that smoke and you're like, <laughs> Sometimes that happens to me. But most of the reason is because I realized that I haven't cleaned... I have not cleaned my bomb. So, once I did that, everything was fine. Yeah. Um, what did that have to do with what we were talking about? Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. Um, That's the point I made just a minute ago, and you just kind of ignored it. Well, that's kind of what I do. Yeah. What else do you have to say? Well, uh, the whole point of this, as I was saying, is we were talking about, like, like kind of what keeps us so busy. And, yeah. uh, you know, you basically explained that you oh, shit. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I work a lot. I mean, I mean, I'm at work from, like, 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 or 7 at night. And I have, like, a, a an hour drive home. So... Takes a lot of time. Yeah. I don't get all the time that I want to devote to all the awesome things. Yeah. You know. Uh, that that kind of make up our, our channel, to be honest with you. Like I'll come home, like seriously, I'll come home and when I get home, like I just bounce like three times. 
when I when, <laughs> sorry we're Don't still watching shit, Joe. <laughs> so when I get home like I'll look out into the in, in, on, onto the onto the land and I'm like is Matt around like is he feeding the chickens what is he doing like I'll I'll, I'll check it out yeah. I'll see if you're around and if you're around then I'll try to get out there to you but a lot of times you're not or oh I'm always around you're always doing something yeah or I'll well, call you and you just don't answer the fucking phone. Yeah. Because I'm doing stuff. <laughs> and I, that goes into my side of things, why I don't necessarily have time. I've mentioned before here on the podcast that I work at a school, at a middle school. Um, and, you know, so it's not like pulling the like work hours that you do. It's, um, you know, I get there at 7, I leave about 3. That's not bad. So I'm there for 8 hours. Um, but... I mean, working at school is just draining. I mean, it's so draining. Like I, When I was in college, I would get up at like 6 in the morning, drive all the way to Clarksville, which was like 45 minutes an hour. Um, you it's know, like me for my work. Do classes and stuff all day, then end up hanging out like after class and not getting home until like, I don't know what time, like, like some, some nights, like not until like, almost like midnight I wouldn't get home and then like I would or or if I did get home early I would stay up that late how'd you take care of the animals during that time I didn't have as many animals while I was in college I mean I still had some but I didn't have near as many as I do now oh um like I didn't have any goats when I was in college I didn't have Stella um all that I had was a few sheep and a a few chickens, not even as many oh, chickens as I had. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And there are like, a lot of farm animals, guys, on the farm at Matt and Joe's Media Overload Studios on the land. There are a lot of animals right now. Yeah. So that's um, what we're and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even on the nights when I did get home early, like I would stay up like watching TV and movies or reading books or whatever. Um, really late and then I would get up again at six in the morning and not be tired at all and now that I work at a school if I don't go to sleep about 10 o'clock like I'm like exhausted the next morning like it is so draining get, get ready my friend when you hit your 30s it gets worse and <laughs> and then also like so I do that and then I come home and I have another full-time job which is taking care of all the animals mm -hmm. I have goats and a cow that has to be milked um, you know, chicken, sheep, all that stuff, it all needs to be fed, and usually I end up feeding them twice, yeah, uh, once, like, as soon as I get home, and then once a little bit later. Why do you feed them that much? Huh? Because they're hungry. Are you supposed to feed them that much? You feed them, I mean, as much as they need to be fed to... Yeah, but, okay, you get home, and you feed them. I don't like to feed them a lot at one point. Like, some people would feed them, like, a lot at, just once a day. Okay, so what animals are you talking about feeding too much? What do you Any mean? of them? I don't like to feed anything too much at I like point. Because I like, you, you know, like, because you, like I'll go out and feed your sheep yeah. and stuff. Like, does that piss you off? No. No? It's usually a small amount. I don't like to feed them too much all at one point just because it can make them sick. Like... Uh, so some people feed their animals just once a day. Like, they'll give, like, each animal, like, a pound of grain or something at one point. And that's fine, but um, I just don't like to do that. I like space it out. I mean, would you eat, like, your entire, like, food intake for the day at one point? That's... Do you? Matt, Matt, that's exactly what I do. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> And, and I, I wait till the. And I think that's my what point. are you fucking saying, sir? I, you know what I'm saying. That I'm fat. That's what you're saying. You're saying, so Joe, you come home after everything's done. No, no, look, I'm just gonna say this right now. You're right. But I come home and I'm hungry as ravenous as fuck. And you haven't eaten all nothing. Day? Nothing. That's ridiculous. I don't eat anything all day. You want to know why? Because I was raised in the retail environment as a manager. And as a manager in a retail environment, when you take your lunch break, it's not a lunch break. You go there to stop and try to eat something, 
you get cold every five seconds for something. Yeah. We need this. We need that. We need this. We need that. So I got accustomed to over the years, just fuck lunch. Just lunch is important. I don't need it. So working the job I am now, which is kind of different, I sit behind the desk. I still don't eat lunch. My lunch break is time for me to have a nap. I sleep for 45 minutes. And then I wake up, refreshed, continue the rest of the day. Wow. A lot of people think that's bad. I don't think so. I don't think so either, but... But, but me not eating is. Like, at all. Yeah. Like, I don't eat anything. That's not good. And then when I get home, I just pig the fuck out. Whatever I want to eat, I eat it. Doesn't matter what it is. However, I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful about that because I spend a lot of money on bullshit. Yeah, you you really do. And you'll notice, you guys don't know, but Matt knows. He comes in the studio. It looks a lot nicer than it was. I, I'm it's, sure in some of those early videos that we did, like in the studio, you can probably see. Well, I know for a fact in that one where we're do tasting hot sauce, you can see. Yeah. I know for a fact that you can. So people go back and watch that one. I so, think that was. So I will say show that that's that week six, I think. Yeah, something like that. Seven. Uh, six the seven. biggest thing for me is I just waste money on food. Really. Um, I'll just go to a grocery store, and it's because I don't. Now, I used to be a bar fly, right? You sit there and you you listen to me, dude. It's twelve thirty. I used to be a bar fly. You were a bar fly. I heard all everything time, you said. All the time. You waste money on food. And uh, I heard it. So I quit doing that, and now since I've been home, all I do is I go to grocery stores, and I'm like, oh, this, this, this. I just buy up all this food. It's fucking crazy. And I don't eat it. It just goes bad. Chips and shit like that will go stale, and I prefer it. I prefer stale shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. Why? No idea. Like, no, well, like, there's something. Like, what? Do they taste better to you? To me, yes. And also another thing, when I was a store manager at Toys R Us in Alabama, I would buy pizza, right? From Jets. Jets is the best pizza because it's so greasy and nasty. It's... They have in Springfield. Have it's, the, it's the best. Have because you ever it's had so Jets? Nasty. Have you ever had Jets pizza? No, and I. Oh shit, Your description man. of it makes me not oh, want. Dude, it. You, we're gonna have some one night. But what I would do? How about we let Lincoln test it for? Sure. Okay. Um, sure. We'll have Lincoln test. It. I won't eat it. Um, but, but when I had it, and then I was in Alabama, I would order all the time. I wouldn't put when I was when I was done with whatever it was. I wouldn't put it in the fridge. Where I put it. In the pantry. I would put it in the pantry. No refrigeration. And I'd leave it there for like a day or two. Best pizza ever. Best pizza ever. I love that shit. So that is gross. I know everyone says that. Yes, because everybody is normal. Dude, doesn't fuck with me, doesn't upset my stomach. I think it's amazing. I think it's the best way to eat pizza. Let it sit for two days. Don't put it in the microwave. I Thank mean, you. I like cold pizza. Yeah. But that... Room temperature. No, no. A couple of days. Don't put it in the microwave. Don't put it in the microwave. No, I never microwave pizza. No, well, I, I shouldn't say never, but... I I sometimes used to. Really? But, but, no. No. That's a sin in my book. What's your favorite pizza toppings, Joe? Favorite pizza toppings? Yeah. Pepperoni. Um, sausage. Jalapenos. Yeah. Pineapple. Oh, nice. All four. That's it. Oh, I like all that. I, I, I like mushrooms. Mushrooms, I'll go with. I like mushrooms. I, I would say if I had, you know, I was on like a strand of desert island, they're like, you got four pizza toppings, show, go. Okay, yeah. I like that this. would be it. Yeah. Okay, mine would be pepperoni, um, sausage. Nice. Mushrooms. Nice. And. I'm gonna go onions. Onions is, is is a it's a solid pick. I gotta have that. That's spice. if I can only have four. I gotta have that spice though. I gotta have that jalapenos. I like jalapenos. 
But if I only had four, I, I would cut them out for really? for something else. Yeah. Well, because those jalapenos would probably mess your stomach up. It'd be on Desert Island. Your stomach all messed up. And you're in bed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I, this has been pretty good. I mean, we said it was going to be random ramblings, and I, I That's think. That's exactly so. what we're doing. Um. Kind of bringing it into like, um, oh god, Chris, what are you a, doing? I don't know. He's standing on a helicopter blade. Um, kind of bringing this into the theme of our of our, of our show, of our podcast, media overload. I was actually thinking about this the other day. Um, you know, I, I like media. Obviously, that's why I dedicated a whole podcast. To it um, and talking about all different kinds of media because I enjoy all different kinds and stuff. And I realized that I was, in fact, experiencing a media overload in my life, which is kind of, it was kind of depressing uh, when, when I thought about how, because like I have a list of like movies that I want to see and a list of like TV shows I want to watch and books I want to read and stuff. And it became really depressing when I realized I will never see or I'll never be able to consume all the media that I want to. Never. I will die before I'm ever able to do everything that I want to do. And that kind of depressed me in a way. I think... It's a true media overload. I mean... I I think you're really uh, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because, because it is an impossible task. Guys. It is. Yes. And you know that. So, don't think that's something to attain. Just enjoy the ride as you go. Oh, I do. I'm not saying that I don't. But I'm just saying that it is sort of depressing that I'll never be able to really do it. Even if I did complete my list, yeah. of things that I wanted to see. There's going to be more stuff along the way that's going to come into existence. I'll tell you what. Existence. Let's jump back into uh, our second episode that we've ever done. Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Uh-huh. You know, immediately. Yes. I know. It's my favorite episode. I know. Me too. I know what happens at the end of everything. Of everything. Do you know? Yeah, we talked about it already. On a podcast? In uh, after show, I believe. We, we talked about we it. We haven't talked about it on a podcast. Okay, sure. So what happened, man? I feel like we might have talked about it last week. I can't even remember. I know Doesn't we matter. talked about it. We're talking about it right now. I know it's post- because because It because sets it's, up it's, post-apocalyptic. I right. Think. It's both of our favorite content. It's both of our favorite recorded episodes. Let's talk about it. What? Okay, so we're going to get a little meta. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what? Okay, so Ash vs. Evil Dead, the TV series. Mm-hmm. Season three is the last episode or last series of anything ever of Ash vs. Evil Dead, right? Yeah. That's it. Folks, that's it. Ash vs. Evil Dead, it's done. No movies, no nothing. That's it. That's the end of the story. Sam, uh, Almost at the same line. Bruce Campbell has said that he's retired. Yeah, he's from done. Playing Ash. So, do you know? Do you know what happens yes. at the end of the third season? Yes, it's that's a post-apocalyptic. Just um, like, like Army, Army of Darkness, Darkness Two would have been. Right. So the whole end of the whole series is is actually the same end of the special end of Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. Or so, sort of, yeah. And in it's akin to it. and in the the TV series, uh-huh. what's her name, Brandy? Yeah, she's Ash's daughter. daughter. Yes, mm-hmm. which I didn't expect. Which I still haven't fleshed out. To be honest with you, I haven't seen any of season three. I just know how it ends. I just know yeah, how it all seen. ends. Yeah, I just know how it ends. Yeah. Which I'm like, fuck! But, at the same time, I'm like, well, how do we combat that? You know? 
Mm -hmm. I still want to see it. Yeah, I do. I would too. I mean, I'm I'm gonna pick it up. I mean, I've got all the Ash. I've got all the Evil Dead shit. The only thing I don't have is season three of the TV series. Because that isn't. No, it's, uh, I, can buy, I can get it right now. Oh, you can? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I haven't seen any of that. Oh. Um, I'll pick it up later. But, um... I either get caught up, but... Oh, man. Oh, yeah, you totally do. You haven't seen yeah. any of that shit. Not much, no. Yeah. But that just goes right back to what I was talking about earlier, the media overload that I'm experiencing. Like, I probably never will get to see everything. No, you're gonna you're gonna see all of Ash vs. Evil. Well, yeah, I might achieve that, but I mean, like, it's just always like I'm watching like so many different shows like right now. Like I'm trying to juggle them around in my schedule. I mean, it it is it's hard. I think I think now it's funny because back back in the day, yeah. you say back in the day, you watch TV, right? Uh huh. You got shows that you enjoyed watching, mm -hmm. right? And you would just. Tune in at those certain times. Yeah, because they had a scheduled time right. that you had to be sitting in front of the TV now to watch it. At that now time. it's like I'm gonna watch this either on TV because you had it, yeah, or I'm gonna watch this the day after because I have the subscription service. Mm -hmm. And I can either be that invested in it or not. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, if the show's good, you'll be invested in it. And it's, where was I going with that, man? I just, I think it's easier to be a, a full advocate of a certain TV series now than it used to be. Because yeah. you'd watch it like on cable, and they're like, oh, we got all these viewers and blah, blah, blah. But now, it's like, okay, we got these this many viewers, but they're also watching it on this platform. Yeah. Or this platform. You know what I mean? Well, see, here's the thing, though. Not everybody considers that. That's part of the reason that Brooklyn Nine-Nine got canceled. I'm sure it is. I was also very surprised so, by that. that kind of goes against what you said, though, because it's not that easy to be an advocate of TV if those things aren't considered. I guess that's true. Now, certain things, like the CW does a really good job at factoring in... Um, like those like streaming viewers and things like that like not live viewers um which you know makes up a big uh portion of their viewership i mean because not everybody obviously has the cw yeah, yeah. uh you know watch the supernatural the which, dc shows which supernatural's been going for how fucking long since like 2005 2006 i had a buddy that was friends with one of those guys. I, I don't remember which one because my buddy died. He uh, he was a heavy drinker, um, anti-depression medication, that kind of thing. And one night, his uh, girlfriend went to bed, and she went to bed at like I don't know ten at night. She woke up the next. Like, she woke up in the middle of the morning, three, four in the morning. He was in the middle of the living room, cold, dead. I don't know what happened. Uh, I used to hang out with this guy all the time. Wow. Um, still don't know what happened. But he used to... I can't... I don't know which one of the guys, because he wouldn't tell me. One of the supernatural... Yeah, because he was like... I, would, I grew up. Yeah, because he was like, I grew up with that guy, and I don't even know him now. Like, he, he's so not like he was when we were growing up. He was like, I don't, I couldn't even, he's not even the same. I think it was to do with the short hair. Oh, okay. I don't, I, I'm not that up on any of that stuff. I, I just thought Supernatural has been around for fucking ever. I remember being in like sixth grade and people were talking about. It's almost like The Simpsons. With almost, like, I With mean, like how it is. Like it's been around it's forever. Like, seems like it. Yeah. It seems like it. So yeah, I remember him, him telling me that. And, uh. But I remember my dad calling me, and he said, the guy's name was Tommy. He said, Tommy's dead. I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, yeah. His his girlfriend called me uh, just the other night. He was blue in the floor. From what? He said, we don't, he's on, they did an autopsy. He was fine. He just, boom, done. 
Well, just one night. Just done. So, I mean, yeah. Not trying to get all weird, everybody. But it's kind of crazy. You know, yeah. that kind of shit. Like, I was, I used to hang out with that guy. Because <clears throat> he was friends with my dad. Watch football with him. Play Madden. We were all getting into it against each other. Like, fuck you. All those dudes dead. Like, what the fuck? It's crazy. It's, it's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It can just happen. I mean, one of us could just keel over right now. I know. And then I would die and not having seen all that media that I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> or you never would have realized the video that you hated. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I mentioned just a second ago that Brooklyn Nine-Nine got canceled. That was a scary couple of hours. It was actually like a day and a half. Mark Hamill! Mark Hamill, Guillermo del Toro. Um, Motherfucking saviors of the day. Yeah, those guys. Okay, so for those who don't know... Uh, Hopefully you at least know what Brooklyn Nine-Nine is. It did get canceled by Fox. Um, however, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was... A, it was an NBC production that had been sold to Fox. And it had been running for five seasons over there. Uh, it's a cop comedy series, if you don't know what it is. Um right. Starring Andy Samberg, Terry Crews, um, and some other people. Some other people. That, uh, that girl that's married to Jordan Peele. <laughs> that Beatrice chick. Uh, Chelsea Peretti. She's. Oh no! Yeah. Okay. She's married yeah, to Jordan Peele. Anyway, um, anyway, great that's, show. It's a great show. Really, really great show, and it got canceled by Fox. Uh, you know, partially because of low ratings. Um, even though, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of people were watching it not live. The ratings for that show and The Last Man on Earth, which they also canceled, which I am also upset about. Yes, Last Man on Earth was a show created by uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, um, who are um, directors of things like 21, 22 Jump Street. Well, Forte uh, was the lead. They got axed off of Solo, a Star Wars story as the directors. They were the original directors oh, before Ron Howard was brought on. Um, we're gonna we're gonna skip over real quick. I've heard that the reviews about Solo uh -huh. have been really good. It looks really good. Everything I've, I've seen. I've heard it. everything is really good. Yeah, I'm excited. So now I'm excited. We should go see it and then do an episode. We should. Review we of should. It. Yeah. And I heard, yeah, because there was a new trailer that came out, and I hadn't heard what, what what's his name, Alden. Alden. Uh. What? Whatever. You know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I can't remember his name. I hadn't heard. I had not seen anything or anything where he talked. I, I hadn't either I hadn't. until just. And there was a new, at least not there much. Was, there other was, than right, right, right. Lines. But there was a there was a trailer, and he said something. And I was like, "That's not like Harrison Ford." Yeah, I was like, "That sounded exactly I, like Harrison." I Ford. I agree. I thought the same thing. I might not have been the same line, but right. when I finally heard enough like, of like, him yeah, talking, yeah, to, he said that. I was like, "That sounded like fucking Harrison Ford." Yeah, are you shitting me? He did a great job. I was like, huh? I got goosebumps. I was like, "What? Uh oh, this." Is probably gonna be. I'm getting used bumps just talking about it right now. I'm. This is gonna be badass. Well, same thing. I thought the exact same thing when I saw um, Donald Glover deliver a few lines as Lando Calrissian. I was like, that was Billy D. Williams. You like, know what Billy D. D. Williams' uh, suggestion to uh, Donald Glover was? Just be charming. He said, just go in and be Lando. He just said, go in and be Lando. I had heard that he said, just be charming. Oh, I, I heard he said, just go in and be Lando. Yeah. Just be Lando. That's all he said. That was it. And Harrison Ford pretty much said the same thing to... What's his fuck? Yeah, because Har 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 blah, blah, blah. I almost said Harrison Solo. Harrison Solo. Harrison Ford doesn't care. No. He doesn't care. About Star Wars. No, he hates the fact that he's Han Solo. He hates Han Solo. Which is weird. I don't understand why. Considering that that character is so much him anyway. He kept asking... Yeah, I know. Naturally, he's Han Solo. Yeah. I just don't understand why he wanted to die so much. I, I thought about like breaking in the bucks. 
Then you can be Han Solo forever. You can be making money forever. You can be 89 years old and be Han Solo and still make like fucking $4 million a picture. You know? Well, anyway. Dude loves weed, though. So he's just like, yeah. I don't care. Well, steering back um, to Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Because yes. we got way off of that, which, you know, it's fine because we're rambling. Who knows where we'll go? In the interest of actually getting this t this um, finished up. So it got canceled, and uh, there was a huge outcry from the fan base. A lot uh, of celebrities. The cast was really bummed out about I'm it. I'm sure. Know, which, apparently they knew that this was a possibility, so the season finale, which is next week or this week, Maybe tomorrow? Yeah, but they didn't plan on that. No, they, they had it planned as being a potential for that. Oh, they did? They were hoping it wouldn't come to that, but they did kind of hope. And the whole this whole current season has had a lot of things that I guess do kind of not tie everything up in a neat little bow, but it does kind of start putting See, little this bows. this is my problem with Last Man on Earth. Like, I really wanted that to end correctly. And yeah. I don't think that that. I lost in interest in that shit. Oh, dude, it got better as it went. I didn't think so. I lost interest. I thought they added too many people. I thought the point of the show was adding cameos of stars and then watching them die. I thought that was awesome. I thought it was the best part of the that show. That was fine, but I think I think they added too many people to the main cast. It's fine. January Jones? She's a lot. All those other... Hey, is she... To a degree. To a I mean, degree. but as the show went on, like, I didn't, like, now I will agree with you. As the show went on, I didn't think she was hot, as hot as I thought she was because she was, like, a little too nutty. And I was like, oh, this bitch is all over the place. I don't know, man. I really, really, really like that show. I enjoyed, like, the, fir I enjoyed the first episode where it was literally the yeah, last he just, man on Yeah, he just, like, fucks around. He's blowing that was shit awesome. up. That's awesome. I love that. Yes, and that's I what like made me fall in love with the show. And and as they added more people, I started losing interest. Yeah, it was all good. I thought it was all good. I thought it was all good. Um, the 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 being alone in the world, yeah, that aspect kind of fell apart because you started finding other people and whatever. Which is fine. I didn't mind that cool. he found a couple of people, the, the, but I think they did the it. The one that was out of his brother being up in space, and then he came back down, and they mm -hmm. found him, and then. He was like, I'm infected, and he left. That was powerful. It, like the, the brother was fine. Like, I mean, it like, was... like the show though, it's like comedic, and then it's got like these really huge drama hits. Like um, the one guy that they had, and he could do everything. He was kind of muscular, and he could rebuild. He could. He was a mechanic, and he do this, do this. And they were like, you have to try to save, or uh, no, somebody had to try to save him because he was sick or something was wrong. And she fucked up, and he died on the table. That mm -hmm. was the end of that season. I think it was like season two or something. Yeah. That was the kind of stuff about that show that made me go, wow. And then after that, like, it was funny. And more drama. Yeah. And then, like, crazy shit like that. When, like, you knew where you were in Apocalypse, and shit was going down. Like, I... That's why I like that show. One minute was funny, and you were all into it, and you're like, oh, this is kind of entertaining, even though it's kind of apocalyptic. Blah, blah. And then some some shit would go down, and you were like, oh, and it would hit you in the gut. Just like playing a way out. It would hit you in the gut. And you're like, holy shit. Yeah. And then next episode, we move on, you know? Mm hmm That's why I really like that show. I mean, it would seem like a fine show. It just wasn't for me. That's probably because you don't like good stuff. No, I like plenty of good stuff. I just didn't like that show. But anyway, Brooklyn Nine-Nine got canceled. Um, there was the outcry that I mentioned. Um, Hulu passed on it. Um, I think Netflix also passed on it. Did they pass on it? Yeah, and NBC got it back, which as we were talking about earlier, is probably where it should have been to begin with. I agree. I totally agree. One thing, NBC knows how to do a sitcom. Yeah. I mean, they, they do well with sitcoms. You are correct. And, um... <coughs> yeah, I think Brooklyn nine is going to fit right in there. I think it'll be... What are you doing? Well, 
I was just saying what was going on. But. Uh, oh, uh, I thought maybe we were doing a podcast. I thought that's what was going on. Joe, come back to the podcast. What the hell are you doing? Here. I'm just putting something on in the background. Why? Give me fun. Oh my god. What is happening? I, d- I don't know. Come back and talk. Like, this is gonna be... Yeah. I'm here. Alright, so, yeah, so Brooklyn Nine-Nine got saved, Last Man on Earth got the axe, probably won't be saved, Fox canceled a whole bunch of shows, I mean, they canceled the Mick, um, I don't give a shit about the Mick, I mean, it was funny, I never saw any episode of that, like, that chick was funny, but she was funny, it, in, it's always sunny, yeah, like, I don't want to see her or anything else. I mean, it was essentially the same character with a little more heart. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it wasn't bad. I think um, it was bad. I think it was bad. You hadn't watched it, so you wouldn't know. I do know. Hello, Joe. How are you doing? Joe, what the hell are you doing? Come sit down. Hello. I think Joe's Snapchatting someone. <sighs> now he's just walking out of the room. So I'm going to keep this thing going. Uh, I'm going to talk about... Um, Joe just threw something. <laughs> Joe, come on. Just come back and do the podcast. I don't know what the hell you're doing. Hello? Hello? Hi. God damn it, Joe. I will walk out in the middle of this. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't give 13 fucks. <laughs> so Bob's Burgers got renewed. Good. Good, That's good yeah. Joe. Which, I mean, I think it was pretty clear that it was going to get renewed. I didn't know it was in trouble or not. Well, I don't think it was in trouble. They just hadn't renewed it yet. I mean, there was a movie coming out. What? You haven't heard about that? That's like a year old news, Joe. Bob's Burgers has a movie in 2020. A theatrical movie. Bob's Burgers is a movie, yeah. It's coming. You didn't know? Joe, are you dying? Like, Joe is laying on his back. His face is purple. He's clutching his heart. I think he's having a heart attack. What are you doing? Okay, Joe. Joe's dying, and I'm just going to keep the podcast going. <sighs> so I guess what I would like to talk about is... Um, I don't know, some other things that have been going on kind of in media news. Uh, some major casting for uh, Quentin Tarantino's new movie uh, was announced this week. Uh, Margot Robbie was officially confirmed to be playing Sharon Tate in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is set around uh, the uh, Manson murders, summer of 69. Who's Charles Manson? Uh, hasn't been confirmed yet. Yeah. Um, Kurt Russell, one of my favorite actors, is going to be in the movie. Tim Roth, uh, Michael Madsen, some uh, key players in Tarantino's movies are going to be in this one. Burt Reynolds is going to be in it. I mean... What? Yeah, Burt Reynolds is going to be in it. And, you know, already had been confirmed before was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. So, I mean, it's going to have a pretty awesome cast, this movie. Who's the director? Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino, who's one of my favorite directors, which I think he's one of just about everybody's favorite directors. I don't claim that I'm special because he's one of my favorite directors, but the guy knows how to make an entertaining movie. I mean... Hit so, or miss. Hit or miss. Hit or miss? Bullshit. Hit or miss. Okay, come over here and talk about this. Actually, Glorious Bastards could suck my ass. Inglorious Bastards is great. Not the beginning. 
Fuck that. The beginning is one of the best parts. The beginning is the worst part. Because you have to read the subtitles. Yeah, that's That's why it's the worst part. That's why it's the worst part. Whatever. It is the worst part. You don't get to see all the drama that's going on. You gotta read the shit. You can see the drama? Oh, yeah? How? By watching the movie? Uh... You mean by watching the text that's scrolling across the bottom drama, of the screen? The drama doesn't happen over the text. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. They sit there and they talk about about milk and stuff for a while before the drama unfolds. And then you start speaking English when the drama really starts happening. And then they flip like, back into the bullshit. So then you're like, oh, okay. Uh. And then there's gunshots. There's no talking over the gunshots. You're just making this like... You're just taking a great scene and and shitting on it because of subtitles. No, that that right. is that is the reason that I don't like that movie is the beginning. Whatever, that's a great. It scene. is. That's a great. scene. What do you scene. mean, whatever? It's a great that's, scene. That's the reason I hate that movie. It's one of the best parts of the movie. Well, Quentin Tarantino can get over the subtitles because, dude, you're in America. Fuck off. Whatever. <laughs> that that's ridiculous. That is just absurd. Why is that absurd? Sit down. Sit the hell down in my studio. Alright, so... Can I help you? Well, we're going to talk about Quentin Tarantino. You yeah, we're going to talk about how the beginning of that movie is bullshit. <laughs> you say he's hit or miss. Yeah. Okay, and you consider Inglorious Bastards a miss. I consider Inglorious Bastards a miss. Okay, what else is a miss? Both the Kill Bills. Bullshit. Not bullshit. Kill Bills are great. Nope. I enjoy both Kill Bills. Dust till dawn, awesome. Okay, that's not technically he wrote it and he stars in it. That's not he didn't direct it. Okay, what was the? Um, I'm not a Quentin Tarantino aficionado, if you will. Okay, you want me to just start from the beginning? Grindhouse. Grindhouse, great. Love Grindhouse. Okay, both parts, Planet both. Terror and mm-hmm. Death Proof. Okay, mm-hmm. correct, good answer. I like both of those. I love Death Proof, which okay. is the part he directed. Right. Wait, that, is that the one at the bar? And they go in the car? Kurt Russell, yeah, the car. Yes, okay, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I love, I love that. Planet that's Terror awesome. was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Okay, okay, from yeah, 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 from Dust Okay. All right, so you go down the line. You're the, okay, start you're the from the beginning. You're the professional. Okay, his his uh, feature film debut was Reservoir Dogs. Not a fan. You need to rewatch it. I know. You've seen it once. I know. You need to rewatch Only one it. time. You're right. Okay. Okay. Uh, number two, Pulp Fiction. Like Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction is great. Number three, Jackie Brown. I haven't seen it. Um, Jackie Brown's actually my least favorite, um, but I still like it. Uh, What's it about? Uh, I mean, it, it'd be easier for me to just give you kind of a rundown than to actually tell you what it's about. It's, um,. Sort of a uh, an homage to black exploitation films of like the nineteen seventies. Um, black exploitation. Yeah, like black exploitation films. Um, have you seen Black Dynamite? Oh yeah. Okay, so sort of in that vein. Oh. Okay. Those movies I that were usually okay. like. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and uh, Pam Greer, who was a big star in the black exploitation days. Plays uh, Jackie Brown, who is a st- uh, stewardess on airlines that's used to as a drug mule, basically, uh, by a drug dealer played by Samuel L. Jackson, who's in like almost every Tarantino movie. Um, and you know, it, it, it like most Tarantino movies, it has like this big like um, crime web all these connecting strands and stuff. So it's kind of hard to, like, explain to a T. But um, it's uh, it's based on a book by Elmore Leonard, who's the guy that wrote the story that uh, ju- Justified, the show Justified, is based on. Really? He wrote the book uh, from... I uh, almost said From Dust Till Dawn. I have <laughs> no idea why. I have no idea why I almost said that. 310 to Yuma, which isn't even close to that. Oh. He wrote... The, the book and um I love 310 to Yuma yeah okay so um yeah from uh I almost said from dust to dawn again god <laughs> damn it man I don't know why um Jackie Brown yeah it's, it's a good movie it's probably my least favorite moving on Kill Bill volume one and two which is technically one movie 
Um, Joe just flipped me off. Um, I guess, I guess you were flipping the movies off, though. I don't like those movies. I like them. I think you're dumb. I like them both. I'm not dumb. I'm smarter dumb. than you. I think you're dumb. Whatever. Moving on. Uh, Grindhouse was next, so Death Proof would be the next in his filmography. Awesome. I love Death Proof. I, I think it's it super really good. underrated. I thought it was really good. Because everybody says it's his worst. And I think that Death Proof, I, I mentioned Kurt Russell's one of my favorite actors. I think Death Proof is his best. I think the whole, the whole, okay. Oh, boy. Oh, okay, boy. Let's talk about oh, Death Proof. boy. Let's talk oh, boy. About I think the whole setup. From when it begins to the story to getting into the car and everything that happens, I think it's all brilliant. I think it's all good. Kill Bill is not like that. Kill Bill is like that. No, it's not. Yeah. No. It is. I don't agree. Kill Bill's good. There might be one scene in Kill Bill that I like. And that would be? The one where all the dudes are coming and they kill them all. Crazy 88. Yeah, there you go. In Japan. Best part. Period. That's that's a good part. That's it, though. That's the only part I like. Only part I like. Well, uh, you're insane. Cause they're both yeah, that's what everybody says. They're both I think Kill Bill movies are kind of pieces of shit. I thought Groundhouse was way better. I probably enjoy Death Proof better, but that doesn't mean I... That Kill Bill's a piece of shit. Yeah, you just like to shit. throw those terms out. I love saying it's a piece of shit. Yeah, I know you do. I think me saying it's a piece of shit just means I don't like it as much as other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so Death Proof, I think, is underrated. I really do. I agree. The only problem that I would say... It's not even a problem when you consider the fact that it's supposed to be an homage to cheesy B-movies and things like that. Um, is that some of the dialogue is a little cheesy. Some of the stuff, like the girls talk about, especially at the beginning, mm. it's just kind of just, it's filler dialogue. It, it doesn't really flow well. It's, but, I mean, I guess it's kind of natural, like sort of how people talk, I guess. Um, but, you know, it's it's fine. I think it's Kurt Russell's best movie performance. I think that... Really? I, I think of all the movies, and I'm a huge fan of his, I think that um, Stuntman Mike... Is his best role. Stuntman Mike is the name of the guy in Death Proof. Oh! Oh. Oh. Dude, it's been so long since I've seen it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, next was Inglorious Bastards, which I already know that you don't like. Um, so just moving right on. Um, next was Django Unchained, which you haven't seen. Never seen. It's really good. And then Hateful Eight. I have seen. What did you think of Hateful Eight? I like Hateful Eight. Okay, I did too. I like it a lot. I like that movie a lot. I like Westerns though. I do too. I'm a big Western fan. Alright, let's talk about Westerns then. Uh, but I'm not an expert. So? I just like Westerns. So let's just talk about it. Like Hateful Eight, happy about that. It's favorite Western? Probably Tombstone. Tombstone's a good answer. Very but, good answer. But probably Tombstone because that's what I can think of right now as a whole. But I also like True Grit, but the new one. Yes. With Jeff Bridges. Which is Coen Brothers, baby. I will murder you, Nets. It, you missed it if it that way. Well, you'll live this day. Anyway, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Western fan. There's just not a lot of, there's just not a lot of Western movies, per se. There's a lot. ton of Western movies. Not very good. There are tons of good Western movies. What? Tons of good ones. Not recent ones. So? So? That's what I need. Matt, I don't want to watch some old bullshit. Old movies are good. Sometimes. Often. Sometimes. Oh, so you're... What, what do you consider an old movie? Like, it's kind of the same way I feel about... Where do you draw the line? What, where do you start going, that's an it's old kind, movie? It's kind of the way I feel about old music. Like the sound quality or the video quality. To where I'm watching it, it's so bad that I can't really get into it. Like, I can get into a black and white film if it's if it's right. Okay, but there are movies all the way back from like the 30s that are black and white and are still good quality. Like Casablanca? That's from the 40s, isn't it? I think it's 
from the, the late 50s. 30s. Was it 30s? Maybe not. Maybe not 30s. Anyway, Casablanca I loved. I was shocked that I loved. Yes. Because I usually don't like old stuff. Mm -hmm. But Casablanca, I was like, oh man, those are really good. Um, Citizen Kane's from like the 40s. And that's I, I saw, I've never seen that movie. I know the references, but I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. never seen that movie. Um, man, my, my point is that there's plenty of old westerns that are good. I'm sure. Plenty. I'm sure. Um, I just haven't seen any. I like Bonanza. Um, was that a TV show? Yeah. Um, I also liked um, Blazing Saddles, but that was a uh, comedy. It counts. Uh, it Mel counts. Brooks. Awesome, awesome director, Mel Brooks. Mm -hmm. Is he alive? Yeah. He is? Mel Brooks is Damn. alive. Damn. He's like 90 he's years like old or fuck, so, but yeah. he's, he's alive. Wow. Man, I don't know if that guy'd want to be. I don't, honestly, I don't think I'd want to live to be 90 unless I was like fully in control. You know what I mean? I think he is. That's what I'm saying. Like of my mind and my. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you would just want to be Mel Brooks. Yeah. But 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 to be honest, like like if I hit like eighty or eighty five, and people like had to start like taking care of me and helping me do stuff, I'd be like just wheel me out in the middle of the highway. Yeah. Like no, I don't want that. To me, that's not. I'd be like, I want to play a video game. Okay, Joe, here's your controller. Uh, here's your here's your prune juice. Oh, thank you. No. Yeah, so back on the topic of westerns. What? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Tombstone's great. Uh, True Grit, the Coen Brothers' True Grit is great. Um, those are some of my favorites as well. Probably my favorite western, though, is... I don't know, those two are both close, but also right up there near the top would be High Plains Drifter. Never. It's a... It was actually the first Western uh, Clint Eastwood ever directed. It was his second feature film he ever directed. It was from 74, I think. Maybe 72. He directed it in 74? Yeah. How the fuck old is Clint Eastwood? Clint Eastwood's like almost 90 years old. Jesus he's, fuck. He's pretty old. He's like Damn. 87, 88, 89. I don't know. He's somewhere right in that ballpark. Okay. Um, yeah, he's an old guy. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny. It it it's a good movie. Hmm. High Plains Drift. It's funny. Yeah, it has it has some funny parts. Yeah. It's so so dark for a western though, for its time especially. I mean, within the first few minutes of the movie, like I couldn't believe it. Because, you know, you're used to, like, Westerns, like, the hero being kind of like this, like, kind of noble figure or whatever. So Clint Eastwood, and by the way, like I said, this is his first Western that he directed. And I think he was just trying so hard to distance himself from his character in the Dollars trilogy. Um, what he was known for. Yeah, which was, yeah, what he was known for in Westerns, which he didn't direct, but he starred he in, was in right. uh, The Man With No Name and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, which are also great Westerns, yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I think he just wanted to do something that would kind of separate him from that. So, like, the main character that we're supposed to, like, root for the entire movie, within the first few minutes of the movie, rapes a woman. Wait, what? He rapes a woman at the beginning of the movie. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, a, like then there's, like, this little, uh, like, a dwarf guy in the little town that he rides into. Like, he kills a couple guys. Uh, and then he goes to, like, take a bath. <laughs> he goes to take, like, a bath at, like, a barbershop or something. <laughs> and the little dwarf guy's, like, helping, giving him a bath and all that. And the chick that he raped comes in with a gun and, like, tries to shoot him. And he, like, ducks down in the tub underwater. And they, like, get her out of there. Then he rapes her again? No, he, like, comes out of the water. And, um, uh, he says something like, like, I wonder why sh she's so mad or something. And the little <laughs> dwarf says, says, probably because you didn't go back for more. I'm like, what is wrong with this movie? This is... 
<laughs> like, this is crazy. That's amazing. It's an awesome movie. Oh, my it's God. Awesome. What's it called? High Plains Drifter. Uh, I might be watching that tonight. It's weird, <laughs> it's weird but it's it's good. All right, step away for half a second. Okay, Joe's leaving the room, and I'm just going to keep talking about westerns that I like. I like Pale Rider, which is also... Uh, a Clint Eastwood western, The Outlaw Josie Wales, of course, is a good one. I mean, pretty much everything Clint Eastwood's been in that's a western is good. I mean, we mentioned the Dollar Trilogy already. Might as well go ahead and throw uh, Unforgiven out there, too. Um, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of good westerns. I don't know what Joe was talking about, saying there wasn't a lot, because there is. There's Plenty of good westerns. Um, not a big fan of John Wayne. I don't know how how Joe feels about John Wayne. I know he's kind of considered like the um, sort of American hero when it comes to westerns and that sort of thing. And it's not like he never made a good western in his in his life. I mean, even the original True Grit. We keep talking about the Coen Brothers True Grit. The original one that he's in is not a bad movie. It's actually pretty good um but i mean i don't know I'll, I'll i'll wait till joe gets back in here to really start talking about about that since we're talking about old movies and westerns and all that stuff might as well talk about john wayne iconic actor i mean i'm not gonna sit here and discredit his his relevance to film and that sort of thing but just not a big fan i don't Maybe I am one discredited. I don't understand it. I don't think he's a very good actor. Hey, Joe! What? What do you think about John Wayne? Uh, John Wayne. He sucks, right? He's not even a good actor. Nah. He's just uh, himself in every movie. Yep. He, he's the exact same person every movie. Every movie. movie. I, I agree. agree. I even agree. when he played Genghis Khan, he was just John Wayne. Yeah. I can't believe that movie ever got made. That's ridiculous. Have you ever seen that movie, Joe? No. The Conqueror? No. Where John Wayne plays Genghis Khan? That is weird. Can you imagine, like, some executives in Hollywood back then, like, sitting around They're and going, like, yeah, that's a good idea! We need somebody to play the... Genghis Khan, an Asian overlord... John Wayne. Hey, how about John Wayne? Oh, yeah! That's a great idea. Are you serious, Fred? How did you come up with that? Well, I saw him in a Western. That Western. movie's awful. What Western is he in? John Wayne. John Wayne? So yeah. many. The original True Grit. Okay. McClintock. He was in True Grit, so obviously... Was he Genghis Khan? In True Grit? That. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the executives. Seeing John Wayne in some movie and putting him in Genghis Khan. I don't know why. What was he in in Genghis Khan? Was he Genghis Khan? He was Genghis Khan. That is ridiculous! He's a white man! The movie is called The Conqueror and he plays Genghis Khan in the movie. So they saw him in True Grit, and they were like, this is obviously Genghis Khan. I think this movie was before True Grit. Actually, I know it was. It was It was made before okay. True Grit. Even still. All right, so let's, <coughs> so let's talk, let's talk right now, movie, okay, you're a movie executive. Uh-huh. I'm a movie executive. Yeah. We're sitting here, and we're talking. Okay. We need a lead role for this Genghis Khan movie. I have an idea. Matt. John Wayne. Um, that's a great idea, but what makes you think that? He's awesome. John hey, Wayne. Take a look at this. What's this picture of in the top left? That's not John Wayne, is it? Those are all John Wayne. That's John Wayne? As Genghis Khan. He kind of looks like it. Oh, f fuck, Joe. What Genghis Khan look like? Oh, since you met Genghis oh. Khan, and you know what... This fat man, though, he doesn't look like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's John Wayne. That fat man right there. They're all John Wayne. That's John Wayne? No, that's not. I don't know what you clicked yeah. to get that. I didn't think so. Get on the phone. 
I knew that one, John Wayne. I see what ones are John Wayne. It's kind of convincing. No. However, however, however. It's not convincing. What are you talking about? He looks like an Asian guy. <laughs> he does not. He looks I like know. John Wayne. Here, here he is without his little hat on. I ain't show me. Just looks like John Wayne. <laughs> Oh, I'm some guy from New York. <laughs> De definitely one of the worst castings. <laughs> no, when he had the hat on. Yeah. Sort of worked. Sort of. I think it just. I think but, the outfit distracts. But you when he little. takes the hat off. It's just John Wayne with a weird yeah. mustache. It's John Wayne with black hair dye and a mustache. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be awful. Like, that'd be like if they're making a movie. Hey, we're making a movie about Martin Luther King Jr. Who should play him? I don't know. Maybe Jackie John... Chan? <laughs> John Wayne? <laughs> yeah, John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will say, though, with the hat, with the hat. Yeah. I could, <laughs> as an ignorant white American, I could buy it to a degree. I can. I think it's awful all around. Okay, I'm with you, but to a degree. Once that hat comes off, there's a white motherfucking man that looks like he's trying to play Genghis Khan, and it's not pulling. It's not. It's not pulling his weight. I mean, it's considered one of the worst movies ever made. Is it like, really? it's on that list. Yeah. I didn't know that. Right up there with Catwoman. Catwoman sucks. With Halle Berry? Yes. <sighs> now, I will say, I want to see Halle Berry in some leather spandex. But... I didn't want to that bad. Not that bad. You're right. I'd rather watch Monster Actually, Ball. I don't find I don't find Halle Berry attractive. I, I did for a time. And then Catwoman came out. Oh, that fucking... Killed your boner. Yeah. That basketball scene. Oh, my God. I don't even remember what you're talking about. Oh, God. I'm going to pull it up. Yeah. It's pull it up. so bad. Like, there are so many cuts. Monster. Just to disguise the fact that Halle Berry does not know how to play basketball. Is that what it was? Yeah. Why is she playing basketball at all, though? I don't know. I guess to show that she has, like, cat like coordination. Yeah, what I got to do with basketball? I don't fucking know, Joe. I didn't direct this piece <laughs> of shit movie. Okay, me bad. and Joe are going to watch the basketball scene. Okay. Why won't it rotate? Why is it not rotating? Oh. Let me take it back. Okay, so we're watching this basketball scene from Catwoman. All right, so we got... So, Halle Berry, she does kind of look hot in this movie. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, she's tasty as fuck. Okay, they're about to play one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, come on. Come hey, on. Hey, they should have got that guy to play Genghis Khan. Yeah, Kong. come on. That dude would have been a better Genghis Khan. <laughs> oh, I'm flipping around. Oh, oh, jumping. Oh, look at me. Look at all the cuts. Like the camera. It like switches camera angles like 50 times. I'm like you're playing the song that's on Grand Theft Auto 5. Okay, so this is awful. Why is this guy suddenly like really good at basketball? Well, you can tell she doesn't know how to play basketball. Dangerous, so dangerous, so dangerous. They're just dancing, like they haven't even so shot the ball. So dangerous, so dangerous. <laughs> Look at the, what the? Nothing is happening. They're about to have sex. Okay. See, you can't even see. Is some ass shaking. No, oh, he took. What is that? What? What is this? It's, it's awful directing, it's awful e everything. It's, it's awful. awful writing. The fact that you're not hearing us say anything is how awful this fucking bullshit is. It's, it, it leaves you speechless. <laughs> what the shit? Huh? 
So dangerous, I'm dangerous, so dangerous, jumping off the wall, throwing basketballs. <laughs> so yeah, you found Halle Berry attractive? Yeah. When she was fucking a monster's ball, let's go. More attractive than Anne Hathaway? No. No? No. Who do, you, who do you think are the most attractive women in Hollywood? In Hollywood? Yeah, top five. You were your top five. Most attractive Shit, women. man. Um, Start at number five and go down. Don't give me number one first. You go up. Whatever. Either way. Go up. Are we talking about actresses side. or just celebrities? Uh, let's keep it actresses. Let's keep it actresses. Right. Ava Longoria, number five. Eva Longoria. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop you right there and make sure that you're not talking about the chick from Training Day. Some chick. That's not Eva Longoria. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. On the bed? No. Yeah. No. no. Who is it? Eva Mendez. And you know why I know this? Oh! That's because what we've I... had this conversation before, Joe! That's what I meant. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Sorry. Eva Mendez. Okay. Number four. Yeah. The top. Ooh, Liv Tyler, good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Number three. Three for Luke. Old school, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan's hot. I or she was. Was. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was number three, right? Number two. Yeah. Number two. Number two. Probably... You know what? I'm going to go Anne Halfway, number one, Emma Watson. Natalie Portman did not make the top five. I'm shocked. I just forgot to put her in there. <laughs> Where would she go? Uh, Who would she knock out? Eva Mendez. Mendez. Probably. No, 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 no. So what you was, bump Eva Mendez. What, what was the next one? I want to say for the next one. Oh. Liv Tyler. Surely she knocks Meg Ryan out. There you go. Okay. I was like. See you later, Meg Ryan. Natalie Portman is in. Okay, so she's number three behind. If if it were if it were like ten to fifteen years later, yeah, I got right. Over my, na, uh, over Natalie Portman. Yeah, she wasn't a big deal then. She was a little girl in the professional. I'm, Just, I'm not comparing Meg Ryan to a little girl. I'm comparing Meg Ryan to Natalie Portman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, fine. Who are um, you? What? Where are you? My top five? Yeah. Starting from the top, bottom of yeah, the Yeah, come on! Yeah, Brie Larson. Brie Larson's number five. That's kind of a new one. Yeah. Um, four, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Who's she? Uh, Death Proof, actually. I know I know, I know that name. Uh, she's Ramona Flowers. And oh, she was in Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Gotcha. Yes, that's why I said she was Ramona Flowers. She was the cheerleader in Death Proof, too, in the second half that they leave oh. behind. Um, yeah. It's been so long. Um, number three. Number three, Kate Beckinsale, who I mention often. Uh, That's a great one. That should have been in my top two. She's she's number three on mine. All right. Number Four. two, Amy Adams. Number, or, number two. two. Amy Adams. She's good. I don't know if I put her in. I would. <laughs> She's good. I did, as a matter of fact. I did do that joke. Uh, and number one. number one, the hottest woman in existence, Jennifer Connelly. Oh, you do like her a lot. Jennifer Connelly is a goddess. She kind of looks like Demi Moore to me. She does a little bit, but hotter. Yeah. Like a younger Demi Moore. Yeah. yeah. That's my top five. And you get to see her, like, slam her ass into another chick. The dildo and that's depressing. I uh, Rick Rick for a drink. <laughs> Who's the other chick? I don't remember. I don't even remember. I don't know either. I remember seeing that. I was like, Jesus. I was like, oh, Jennifer. <laughs> I 
was like, but I remember watching. In that my movie. mind, this sounded so much better. I, I was watching it with my roommate at that time. My roommate was a guitar player in my band, and we watched that movie. Somebody let us borrow it, and we were watching, it and we were like, "We are never doing drugs ever." <laughs> oh, not- we're just like fuck that. <laughs> um, I don't want to slam my ass in another dude's ass in front of a table, for a bunch of business dudes. Yeah. Uh, you you ask um. If we were just including celebrities, would your list have changed if we were including non-actresses? You mean like musicians? Non-actresses, just celebrities, period. Nah, probably not. Yeah. I don't know that mine would have either, really. Probably not the same. I think mine would have been about the same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty confident that Jennifer uh, Connelly is the most beautiful woman ever. You've always been a big fan of hers. I don't know, but Amy Adams and Kate Beckinsale, I don't know, they're all right. Kate Beckinsale, as long as she's in that leather suit, I'm on board. But also, she's like all about that, she's got that new dude that's like really young. She's like her, he's like your age. Yeah, I'm young. Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Kate Beckinsale's all over dude that's like your age. Yeah. Like, she's just like... And she got in. She she got with the director of Underworld while she was married. Mm-hmm. And she split up to to date the director, and she sold that guy to fuck off. And then she started dating this like young know, dude. You have a chance. Awesome. Okay, so we have to go find Kate Beckinsale because we need her. Sorry, I got a cramp. I've reached uh, out to her multiple times. We got to get her on this podcast. Yeah. Ow! Oh, it hurts. Okay. Um. All right, Matt. You may have to do a new podcast. Joe's got a cramp. You tell Joe's out of shape when he gets a cramp just sitting here. <laughs> Talking on the podcast is too much extracurricular activity. Ah! Extracurricular activity? Ah! What are you talking about? Ah! Joe, you're dying. Oh my god. Joe, you look like shit. I just want to point out that Joe's just wearing a white t shirt again. That's all I ever wear. Or, or your flash shirt. Those are the only shirts you own. Yeah, because I'm fat. <laughs> I don't fit in other shirts, Matt. Yeah, it makes my tits look a little less titty. It really doesn't. <laughs> well, this doesn't. This makes my tits look like I'm Dolly Parton, motherfuckers! <laughs> jiggle, 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 Stop. jiggle. Stop! Stop! Oh my god. <laughs> I thank God we're not doing the webcast where everyone would see that. You wait for me to lactate. You wait for me to lactate. You probably will. So, um, what else? Have you seen the uh, Childish Gambino video everyone's talking about? This is America. This is America. What'd you think about it? Good. I liked it a lot. Um, I like the song. It, it, the song's good. Did you pick up all the nuances of the video? Yeah. It takes a couple of watchings. No, uh, not really. For not me, if no, you're, not if you're I smart. totally agree. The first time I, the first time I watched it, that's what people say. I was just being pretentious. No, no, no. But the first time I watched it, I was like, I get it. Yeah. I, know, I know what he's saying. Like I all that up shit, on a all that more. shit going on in the background, and you know, every once in a while, like, and they took care of the gun. Mm-hmm. Like every time he shot something, like they put it in the towel and they were making sure it was all okay. Yeah. And all this stuff going. Now on I actually background. missed that the second time. I noticed it the first time when he shoots the guy with the bag on his head. Uh, but with the the uh, church, like the, the AK, singers, the church. yeah, I didn't notice because I was just like, "What?" Like, thing, I, I didn't notice the cloth that yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, I know all of media's talking about it, just saying it's brilliant. It is. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, well, it, the uh, guy that directed that music video, I, I'm not. I'm gonna butcher his name if I try to pronounce it, but uh, it's probably like. Hiro Murray or something like that, and he's uh, been directing television. He directed an episode of Legion um, last season, season one. Yeah. He's directed a 
bulk of the episodes of Atlanta, Donald Glover's FX show. Uh, he's well, been directing um, the show that I haven't watched yet, but I really want to. It's on that list that I'll never finish. Uh, Barry on HBO. Everyone's uh, Bill Hader's show on HBO that everyone's that. raving about. He's directed episodes of it, and apparently the show's really good, and his directing on it's great. I've got to watch that show as soon as possible. Um, got to get some access to HBO or something again. Um, but yeah, uh, he's a uh, uh, well, and, 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 great director, I can tell. No, and the way that Donald Glover is, and the actions that he does, the dance moves that he does, mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, well, fuck is he doing he it's like a caricature of the old school black fight face it? right minstrel shows things minstrel like shows that. yes jim crow yes and yeah. the- jim crow that's it jim crow and he kind of does that and he shoots a guy in the back of the head but then the whole dancing the whole the, all of the dancing that he does with the teenagers behind him and all that stuff is a distraction a distraction between all the shit that's going on in the background well and which also, you're supposed to pay attention to well it's a reference to the fact that it seems like the only time and I'm not saying that I I don't want to like get political but since we're talking about a vid- video that has a political message we will um, somewhat we'll get into it I don't want to get like deep into it yeah, but yeah. um the dancing is is in reference to the fact that it seems like in our media oftentimes the only time we really pay attention to black people is when they're providing us with some form of entertainment. entertainment. Right. And you notice that the people in the video who are dancing along with him are safe from all the um, right. chaos that's no, going that on should in the background right. and all that stuff. Um, the teens. They're they're playing along with the caricature so you so you said mm-hmm. uh, which is Donald Glover who in a way is representing America itself in the video he is um, that's great I think I you mean, know we talked just, a couple weeks ago about best music videos ever made um, we're talking about I think some this of his one's videos. already high in the running for one of the greatest I've ever seen I agree I agree it's a great video it's it's relevant it's uh, artistic. Yeah, it's pertinent. Uh, uh, pertinent. There you go. Um, <laughs> and, but and the music's good too. I mean, and the, I'm, the song is great. I, I'm not. Love I'm it. not a big fan of the. It's a jam. Yeah, I mean it's good. Yeah. Um, like the lyrics, I don't necessarily like buy into as much because it's like black man, whatever, blah blah blah. Like I don't well, identify with that, but I identify with everything else. Yeah. Like in the beat, and the way it goes, like the song's good. I mean, it's it's good to listen to, and it's got a message. It's kind of like that song Kanye West, Black Skinhead. You heard it before. Yeah, same sort of thing. It's a jam, mm. but I like the lyrics. I don't identify yeah. with. Them. I'm not as familiar with Kanye West. So. I, I I'm not a big fan overall, but I do like Black Skinhead. No, no, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've always... I, I like Childless Gambino, so I know I everything John that he Gambino. does. I love Don um, Glover, period. Oh, like, he's, everything he does is amazing. That's why I think you would love Atlanta. Well, yeah, I just haven't seen it. Dude, we'll watch an episode, not tonight, probably. Yeah, we, no, we, I need to, because I've never I have seen FX one. now. We'll, we'll pull it up. We'll probably oh, nice. watch it on here. Okay. Um, I've never seen... I've never seen an episode of uh, Atlanta. The thing is, like, most episodes are... St- sort of standalone, so you don't have to have seen other ones to get it. But like Louis C.K. shows? Similar. Do you like Louis C.K.? Like Louis and... Yeah. Yeah. Did you like those shows? Yeah. Like, you didn't like when all this stuff came out about him, you weren't like, fuck Louis C.K. I love Louis C.K. Dude, I do too. The thing is, he he admitted to that for like a long time. But see, I think it's because it's his humor. Like, I think he like did that to be funny, and he didn't think he was... He thought he was being funny, but it wasn't funny. Yeah. And the chicks were like, ah. I love Louis C.K. Dude, he, I'm... Louis C.K. for life, if motherfuckers. He, if he was going to be in Nashville tomorrow, I would pay yeah. him to go see him. Yeah. If, there were if he was going to do a live show, Louis, 
Yeah, sorry guys. I, I don't mean, care if he jerked it in front of he, some yeah. chick. I mean, if he just jerked off in some chi some chick and just. And I'm not saying that to be insensitive, like to them. I mean, I'm sure I I wouldn't want some random dude jerking off in front. I of me think either. he was doing it because he thought he had the star power and he thought it was funny. Yeah. And it was the number two was not right. It wasn't funny to them. But you know what? If I were a cool, funny chick. Right? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have fucked him, but he was like, I'm going to drop my pants and jerk off right in front of me. Like, All right, whatever, motherfucker. Blah, 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 blah. If I was a real comedian, I would have I would have tried to take in that and, like, fucked with it. And if he would have done it, I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> and then walked out of the hotel room. I wouldn't have gone to the press and been like, he sexually assaulted me, blah, blah, blah. The, the worst thing you could have done is looked at his dick and gone, <laughs> the best thing you could have done two chicks come on yeah I mean am I wrong am I right you're on the right track I mean I don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> what do you mean I mean I think you might be oversimplifying it a little bit how that's what he did yeah but I I you said if I was, like, a cool comedy chick or something like that. I mean, like, I don't think... Even if it's sort of funny, I mean, I don't want, like, some fat guy jerking off in front of me. I mean, I don't care if it's funny or I mean, the minute, the minute he would have dropped trap, It would make anyone uncomfortable. And it would started be hard to just laugh in dude, that moment. Okay, maybe it's just me. But if I were a chick, not if I were a chick... And I was in the hotel room with another friend of mine, a comedy friend. I got back up now. See, I don't think the comedy friend. I'm in there with a. I, okay, well, I'm in there with a friend, and a dude's there, and he's like, hey, ladies. And he drops his pants and starts jerking off. I either would have done one of two things laughed, or looked at my friend and gone, what the fuck is this dude doing? I wouldn't have, like, May okay, maybe three, maybe bolted, but if I'm a, if I am a a female comedian on the circuit, a comedian, whatever, on the circuit, no one says that. I'm just on the circuit, and this dude drops trow in front of me, I probably would have laughed at him just to disarm him. That would have been what I. That would have been my move. Mm -hmm. I'd have been like. Done. And then the whole the whole situation is diffused. But no. No. I'm gonna pack up all this oh shit, come on motherfucking school gross and run out. Laugh at his ass. Just laugh at him. Just laugh at him. Okay. Well He would have he would have I I don't get me wrong. Matt, I, what do you think? If I, it had been you okay, if it had been you that dropped trial in front of me and I'm a chick, and I'm like with my girlfriend that you invited us into your hotel room and we're both laughing at you, would you not feel insignificant? Well, yeah. I mean, I would. But what does that have to do with... Then, that would have diffused the whole situation. And then they would have just been like, all right, we're packing our shit and we're leaving. And they'd walk out. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not saying what he did was right. Um, no, I'm not either. It seems like you're over... You're, I don't know. Whatever. The point is, I still like VCK. I don't care. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll we'll just agree on that and move past it. Um, without without getting too you gotta political, see Atlanta. You gotta see it. I just think, I think bitches complain about too much stuff. Just like Aziz and sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Aziz and sorry. Okay. Aziz and sorry. That was bullshit. You know what I'm talking. That about. was bullshit. That's what I'm talking about. That. Like, this whole Me Too movement and stuff, like, like a lot of it I can get behind. That, to me, was just I had sex with him, and I just, I, I didn't feel good about it afterwards. Yeah. That's not a Me Too thing. No, that's just someone making a, a You're a dumb bitch. Thing, that's, yeah. that, you're a dumb bitch. And setting back progress. You're a that, dumb bitch. That's what you are. I'm sorry. You just want it, you just want to get into it. You want to maybe get some money out of it. Um, you're a dumb bitch. Leave the dude alone. Um, 
That's been some time ago, though, so I'm pretty sure everything's fine. I don't know. I haven't really seen him. Since then, right. Um, He's probably laying low, like everyone else, because of all this bullshit. But you still got his Netflix show, I guess. Yeah. Master of None's a great show. Have you seen it? Nope. Oh, you have to. It's very good. I'll add it to that list. I'll never see it. I'll be depressed. It's very good, Matt. It's very good. You uh, you you should watch that. I'm Matt. sure I would like it. It's very good. I'm sure I would like it. It's very good. Um. So what else? I don't know. I mean, no. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. I changed my mind. I don't want to talk about me too anymore. I want to move past it. Yeah, and the reason I don't want us to get into that is because I think some of it is blown out of proportion. I'm sorry for those of you that actually have something, but I think some of that, as he's in sorry, is a great example. Mm -hmm. Some of that is not a me too qualified argument. This is not. You made a decision, and you didn't like it. That doesn't make it me too. Right? Yeah. That's what I think some of that is going on. They do something, and they're like, well, I didn't want to do that. That that didn't make me feel good. Yeah. But I did it. Yeah, I think, I agree. So it's a me too. I think it's, I think it's no, a me too. No, nah, nah. You consented. That doesn't make it me too. Because the fact that you don't say that you consented, I think that's key. They don't say that I consented, but they did. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Well, I didn't consent. Yes, you did. At the time, you did. Yeah. You're just not saying it now because you felt bad about it. That's what I think. I agree. Fuck me if I'm wrong, and I probably am. All of you ladies that are listening to our Was podcast that right now. What? You said fuck me if I'm wrong. I said is that consent? No, I did not consent you. Well, you said fuck me. That's... But if you don't like it... I am going to join the Me Too movement right now. I don't want the viewers to fuck me. Even though they're going to. Mm -hmm. so Does that mean right. I get to join the movement? If you get raped, yes. How easy would it be for me to get raped? Do you think? From our followers. From our followers? I don't know. Jeremy would have to be pretty drunk. Jeremy. I need to be raped. Joe, don't say that. Oh my god, just stop. <laughs> Alright guys, so... <laughs> Thanks for listening. I hope you uh, disregard that last part. Oh my god, Joe. I need to be this, raped. This is stop. This entire time I've been thinking, where's he going? With I this? need to be raped! Joe, stop. Okay, guys. I want to be serious for a moment. Joe, don't say that again. Okay. Um, we have mentioned rape. A lot of times on this show, it's been a probably it's been a while. It's I been think. a while, um, but uh, we do not condone rape. Uh, I don't even think that we think it's funny, do we, Joe? No. Okay, and um, it just comes up a lot, and uh, if we've offended anybody. We apologize. Joe it, does not need to be raped. He did not mean to say that, did you, Joe? No. Okay, good. Moving on. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything that's really on your mind right now? Random ramblings episode. Um, Let's try again in one more little discussion before we wrap things up. Sure. Um, Throw out a topic. Anything. Preferably media related, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm trying to think of something that's coming to mind right now. Um, the problem is, we've got new movies that came out, Infinity Wars. 
I haven't seen that. Um, so I haven't seen Black Panther. Um, I'm very excited about the Solo movie now. I'm excited. Like I said, we'll probably... I'm just going to go ahead and say, Joe and I are going to go see that movie together, and then we're going to do a, a review on it, which won't get any spoilers. Um, so uh, just go say All that now. Long. And I will say that I was not I was not looking forward to it because of Aldrin... What's his fuck? But I heard a couple, some trailers, and I heard him talk, yeah, okay. which I never heard him talk before. Yeah, you already said this, Jim. Well, I'm going to say it again. And I heard him talk, and I was like, he kind of sounds like Harrison Ford a little bit. Yeah. And I said I agree. He might not look like him. Because we He kind of sounds like him. Yeah. Shut the fuck up and let me talk again. Well, I mean, I just wanted to try working another topic, not, you know, doing that, do one we've already talked about over again. What do you want to talk about? I was going to let you pick, but... I already did. Yeah. I picked the same thing we talked about before. <laughs> yeah, which is awful. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Well... I did. Okay. So what do you got? Well, I'm going to take a minute to think about it since you took a minute to think about yours and you did a terrible job. So, I want to take this time right now to say I uh, wholeheartedly appreciate everyone that has supported our uh, channel so far. Also, I want to say right now, uh, welcome, new subscriber, uh, Jonathan Strong. You, you welcomed him last week. Oh, well, I forgot, and I'll welcome him again. And uh, Jay Strong, welcome again. You saved my life, good sir. You told that story last week. Shut up, Matt! God damn it! Sometimes people haven't heard these. Well, we should encourage them to actually watch the other episodes. And go back and listen to everything. But maybe they don't. Maybe they listen to the new one. And they're like, oh, what are they talking about? And then I'll tell them the story. And then they're... In or you could just not tell the story twice and they wouldn't go, oh, what are they talking about? They could just watch all the episodes. That's the sound of Joe hit his bong. It's because I can't deal with the stress. This used to be fun. And now, I just want to kill Matt every time I see him. Mm -hmm. I want to grab him by the back of his hair, back of his head, and slam it in the keyboard. Yeah. So we can never do another podcast ever again. Mm -hmm. But you won't. No, because then we won't be able to do a podcast ever again. You just said you didn't want to. Does that person have a watermelon or a lollipop for a... Um... The shit was that? I don't know, Joe. Okay, so we're still sort of watching a uh, video game playing, but it's not uh, Chris and Gary. We just have some random stuff going on in the yeah. background. Just something to look at while we're thinking about what we're going to say next. I don't know. I just want to say... Uh, I want to say that Joe... And I uh, probably won't do this much longer. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just kidding. You really don't want to? Uh, nah. Nah. Does it no I mean no or yes? It means yes. I'm completely confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, guys, I, I do want to say this right now. It's very possible that next week, is going to be a bye week. We haven't decided for sure, but if there is not a new episode next week, don't be surprised. Joe's going on a trip and he's not taking me. Um, Look, I don't want to go. I actually do not want to go on this trip. I why not? To. Why? Yeah. Because I don't like traveling. I just want to stay home. But Gatlinburg's great. He's going to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You been? I've been many times. Never been. Really? Never been. Dude, you gotta go to Bennett's Barbecue. Bennett's Barbecue? Yes. Okay. Best sandwich I ever ate in my life was at Bennett's Barbecue. What kind of sandwich? A uh, brisket, barbecue brisket sandwich. Barbecue it's brisket called the sandwich. ultimate sandwich. You can get it with different meats, but I got mine with brisket. What kind of meats do they have? 
uh, like just pulled pork barbecue. Pulled pork sounds good. Um, I can't remember, but I got mine with brisket, and it was the best sandwich I've ever Bennett's had. barbecue. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check that out. It's over near like Ober Gatlinburg, where the little like, what do they call those like, cars that are on the line that goes up like a mountain. Oh, like the sky cars. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's over on that they side have those? of the town. Yeah. They have sky cars. Yeah. How the fuck is this place? Gatlinburg. <laughs> <coughs> Who is it? <laughs> well, you ask, Joe. What is this place? Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg is <laughs> Gatlinburg is awesome. It's a great place. And half of it like burned down. Yeah. Because of those kids. Yep, because those kids. Little fucks. Little fucks. So do they fuck it up for me? Like, it's Gatlinburg going to be different? I don't know. I haven't been there. Haven't been? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> This is all some sort of elaborate ruse. I was just talking about making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Bennett's barbecue, you idiot! <laughs> I made that shit up! I go to Gatlinburg, I'm like, where's Bennett's barbecue? You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Different? I don't know. I've never been. Oh boy. <sighs> All right, guys. Uh, so I think we're gonna wrap it up right about here. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say all the usual stuff that I say. Check out our Facebook page, Matt and Joe's Media Overload, or follow us on Twitter at uh, what is it? <laughs> at Matt and Joe Mo. Yeah. Why don't you update that shit every once in a while? I do. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. You just can't figure out that the pin tweet is at the top because it's pinned to the I don't top. Understand. And that's why it's the first oh, tweet. Oh, why that show works. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, head over there. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Sub stuff. fucking scribe! Um, Please. Like I said, next week very well could be a bye week. But just in case that it's not, why don't we do something right now where we'll let the fans decide what the topic? I was just thinking that, Matt. Episode. I was exact. I, I I was just thinking the exact same thing. You're reading my mind, sir. So should we give them some options, or should we just say comment and hmm. we'll pick from the oh, comments? No. What do you think? Let's give them some options. Options. Okay. Let's do a. Let's do like a like a vote. All right. Like, what we got uh, like two things. What do you got? All right, guys. Uh, how about I pick one? You pick one. Okay. Um, all right, guys. If we do it next week or the next week, if we do take a bye week because of Joe's trip, whatever, whenever it is, the next episode, uh, vote on it. It will either be uh, you pick your topic first. My topic. My topic will be favorite first person shooters. Game. Yeah. You want to dedicate a whole hour, hour and a half to that? No. Just pieces. Because I'll pick a topic, you pick a topic. No, it's going to be the sole topic. Oh, the sole topic. Oh, the, the sole topic. That's what oh, we're okay. on it. Survival games. Survival games, okay. Uh, I'm going to go with. Uh, hmm. I want to talk about something. Talk about something animation related. We haven't done animation. That's one of my favorite topics. Um, we haven't really talked about animation since the anime episode. Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes. A comic strip. Yeah. Just talk about Calvin and Hobbes' comic strip. I don't want to talk about Calvin. What? Well, that's my favorite. You don't know anything about Calvin and Hobbes. Well, do you want to change your vote for episode topic to Calvin and Hobbes? Yes. Okay. So our episode will either be about Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes. Or it will be about, um, you know, I want to do that Simpsons episode. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. So Sim Simpsons slash Futurama? 
Yeah, Simpsons slash Futurama. We'll go ahead and do both of them. Matt Groening. Matt Groening. In his creations. What's option three? Should we have an option three? No. No. Okay, so next episode will either be Kevin Hobbs or Simpsons Futurama. Bill Watterson, God rest his soul. Or. M. M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan? Didn't he, didn't he do The Simpsons? Huh? Didn't he do The Simpsons? The Simpsons? Yeah. Did he do The Simpsons? Yeah, M. Night no. Shyamalan? No. Yeah, he did The Simpsons, eh? No. He definitely did not. Oh. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, he is working on a uh, animated oh, comedy. Oh, bullshit. He's working on an animated comedy for Fox. That's weird. He is. It's going to be called Eleven uh, Little Indians or something. Um, I don't know what the fuck this there is. There is a lion. The Cowardly Lion is live streaming... Conan Exiles. Yeah, and you can see a little bit of Conan's What ass. in the fuck? Anyway, uh, so next episode will either be Calvin and Hobbes, or it will be Simpsons, Futurama, Matt Groening related stuff. Um, so, yeah, leave your vote in the comments. You can give it to us on Twitter. Ooh. You can give it... Joe, pay attention so we can do the outro. Um... Yeah, either put it on Twitter, put it on Facebook, wherever you want to leave your comments, just do it and let us know what you want the next episode to be. If you don't vote, Joe and I, I don't know how we'll decide what to do, so please vote. Yeah, we want to want some feedback. Yeah. All right, guys, so uh, I, I think we're done. Are we done? I think we're good. Oh, when are we going to start uh, Manly Beach Volleyball or Volleyball League? Oh, um, so yeah, we're... Um, Something that, now this is kind of Matt's idea. We mentioned actually. it last week. Um, we high school girls started. Oh, <laughs> we did. You can't remember anything. Shit, though. man, I can't remember. Yeah, I remember, remember that you picked Calvin and Hobbes as your topic. Like no, next week, I'm gonna be like, we're gonna be talking about Calvin and Hobbes. You're gonna be like, like what? Hobbes? <laughs> we're talking about Calvin Hobbes. What? Who the fuck picked that? <laughs> no, but um, uh, Joe and I are gonna play volleyball. Yeah. It's um, going to be a sports league. We're going to live stream. We're going to play no. Kenny Loggins the entire... Dude. I know what we need to do now. Yeah. we got to get a boombox. Mm -hmm. Get the soundtrack to Top, Top Gun. Gun. Mm -hmm. And we play that one song on repeat. Playing with the boys. The whole... After chasing sunsets One of life's simple chores Playing with the boys and do we just we just play volleyball like that, and just wait for people to join? Maybe we will. I think we should do that. We'll have to wait and see, guys. I think we should do it. So until then, I'm Matt. And I'm Joe. And that was loud. And this is Matt, Matt and Joe's and Joe's Media Overload. Way to go, Joe. God, God damn it. Bring it home. Damn it.